Hello and welcome to DVB English News. I'm Adam. In this week's headlines, Thailand said it's prepared to take up to 100,000 refugees fleeing from Myanmar. New Zealand protesters demand military regime be disinvited from meeting in Wellington. Civil society groups on selection of UN special envoy. Military to replenish troop strength with nation's youth and some voices of the conscripted. The Karen National Liberation Army seized the last remaining military outpost in Miawati Township of Karen State on Thursday. Thailand's Minister of Foreign Affairs said Tuesday that it is prepared to take in 100,000 refugees temporarily from Myanmar. The Thai-Myanmar Friendship Bridge which connects Miawati to Mesa, Tak province of Thailand, is the third largest border gate and one of the most lucrative for the regime in Naypyida. The Thai military has increased security and patrols along its side of the border to prevent any fighting from spilling over into Thailand. A rally took place at New Zealand's parliament grounds in the capital on Wednesday. Protesters demanded that the government reject visas for Myanmar's military regime to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations meeting in Wellington, April 18th to 19th. The New Zealand government is uh, inviting junta through the ASEAN. The previous New Zealand government, the Liberal Party government, has been very strong against the military juntas and stand with the democracy and stand with the Myanmar people. That was Na Ong, the spokesperson for Defend Myanmar Democracy. New Zealand was one of the first countries to condemn the 2021 military coup. This ASEAN meeting in Wellington would be the first hosted in the country since 2019. Member of Parliament Phil Twyford called on his government to decline visas for Naypyida, as Australia did during its ASEAN meeting in Melbourne last month. Human rights expert Ken Omar, founder of Progressive Voice, spoke to DVB about the appointment of Australia's Julie Bishop as Myanmar's UN Special Envoy on April 5th. I think she has to come clean to the people of Myanmar because Myanmar people already lost way too much confidence in the international community, starting from the Security Council to the Secretary General. That was Kin Omar, founder of Progressive Voice. Myanmar civil society groups criticized the UN Security Council for excluding Chamo Tun from its briefing on April 4th. He's Myanmar's permanent representative to the UN. Yeshua Moser Puangsuan is a conscientious objector who refused U.S. military service in 1971 during its war on Vietnam. Since 2005, he has been a research coordinator with the International Campaign to Ban Landmines with a focus on Myanmar. He spoke to DVB about the military conscription law, which was activated on February 10th. They want to get 60,000 people in their conscription. That's not going to happen, but let's say they even come close to half at 30,000. That would essentially replace the numbers that they have lost in the first three years of armed conflict. That was Yeshua Moser Puangsuan, a conscientious objector and Myanmar landmine researcher. Last week, we brought you the story of Robert in Yangon, who wants to evade military conscription but he hasn't decided whether to flee to the resistance strongholds or into Thailand. Regime administrators have been visiting families and townships nationwide to collect data on anyone eligible for military conscription. The maximum punishment for those evading conscription is five years in prison. Two others have shared their stories with DVB, 21-year-old Miat, who has fled to Thailand, and 25-year-old Thomas, who remains in Myanmar. At uh, first, I talked to my mom, and my mother wanted me to come here. If I don't get any opportunity to go abroad, perhaps I'll be in resistant area down the road. It's very strange to me, the uh, it's foreign country, so the language is strange. Uh, I don't know the three, I don't know anything. It's... I have a family to preserve, especially my mom and my grandma, so I, I don't ready to go to the resistant area for right now. That was Miat in Thailand and Thomas in Myanmar. And that's it for this week's headlines. I'm Adam. Stay tuned to DVB English News on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening.